So I want to start by telling you a story. About 12 months ago, I was waking up at my usual time, 5 a.m. for my morning CrossFit workouts. I love CrossFit, I love strength training, and I go to a gym here in San Francisco. And I was waking up feeling exhausted, sore, just kind of depleted. And then I would go to my workouts and I felt like I wasn't really seeing progress week to week. My lifts weren't really increasing that much and I felt a little bit gassed at my workouts. And then I would come home, I would have a yogurt bowl. My typical breakfast at the time was granola, yogurt, fruit, Greek yogurt, so I had some protein. And then I would go through my day, typical day, clients, admin stuff, running, flora, nutrition. And then around 3 p.m. I would just hit a wall. I needed something sweet. I had a lot of sweet cravings and I just didn't really feel like I could go that long in between meals. I felt like I was hungry like two hours after a meal or even sooner sometimes. So fast forward six months, I was waking up same time, going to the same workout class, but I was feeling pretty recovered. I was feeling a normal amount of sore. I was feeling ready for my workouts and my strength gains were happening. I increased my deadlift by like 30 to 40 pounds over the course of six months. And that was big for me as a small, small human. I'm like 5'2 and, and um, don't have a huge strength training background other than CrossFit. And so I was feeling like I was making progress. I would come home, I'd have the same breakfast, but I switched a couple things, which I will tell you in a moment. And then I would go through my day. I felt like I had energy. My sweet cravings almost completely went away. I still had a little bit, but they weren't so overpowering and they weren't accompanied by that crash at 3 p.m. where I just needed something sweet or it was a sweet emergency. And then I would go to bed with a normal level of fatigue and I would know I would, was going to recover that night. I was going to really sleep and recover and be able to do it again the next day. The difference between scenario A and scenario B is protein. So I'm a registered dietitian. I know that I need protein in my diet and I usually have a protein source with every meal, but I actually wasn't getting enough protein for my activity level. I had increased my activity level and the amount of muscle on my body, which both of those things increase the amount of protein that you need in your diet. And so I was probably getting somewhere between like 70 to 80 grams of protein a day, but actually as, ha as someone as active as I am and as an avid strength trainer, I really needed more. And so adding protein supplements into my diet actually really, really helped me because it's so hard to get 100, 120 grams of protein in your diet. For me, at least, it's really challenging. So adding a protein powder into my yogurt bowl in the morning gave me an extra 20 to 30 grams. In addition to the Greek yogurt that had maybe 15 to 18 grams, I was getting a nice 40-ish gram of protein breakfast. And then that really helped me start off my day right. I started to think more about the protein portion size at all my meals. So I was really thinking about getting a palm size of protein, adding proteins in my snacks, but I wanted to talk to you about the protein powders that I personally use because I know that protein powders can sometimes result in digestive issues, bloating, IBS symptoms for those with sensitive stomachs. For myself, as someone who struggled with IBS and reflux for years, you can learn more about my journey in this video. I know that the right protein powder can make or break your morning. Some protein powders have things in them that could irritate the gut lining. So an example of this is erythritol or any sweetener that ends in an OL, malitol, sorbitol. These are called sugar alcohols and you can find them in a lot of popular protein powder brands. Orgain is one of them that has erythritol and that's a super popular one that a lot of my clients come to me thinking that they've made a great choice, but it may be causing their bloating or worsening their bloating symptoms. So you want to look at the back label, avoid things like erythritol, sorbitol, anything that ends in an OL, it's usually a sugar alcohol because that can cause excess gas production and irritate the gut lining. Secondly, there are a lot of protein powders that have added fibers, like crazy amounts of fiber. Some protein powders have up to 20 grams of protein per serving, which is crazy when you think about the daily recommended amount of protein is about 25 to 35 grams a day. So you could be getting 20 grams in that protein powder plus whatever you're putting in your smoothie and you could be getting way too much fiber at one time. This is what I like to call a fiber bomb. You wanna watch out for fiber bombs because this could really, really irritate your symptoms. 
and contribute to gas and bloating. So watch for that. You also wanna watch out for other types of sweeteners that might irritate the gut lining like sucralose or aspartame. Look at the back label for those sweeteners and you wanna choose a protein powder that is sweetened with stevia, monk fruit, or allulose. Those are typically better tolerated when it comes to people with digestive issues. If you're someone who struggles with acid reflux, you're also going to watch out for the flavor of your protein powder. So sometimes we think about chocolate as a reflux trigger in a bar or in a cookie, but when it comes to protein powder, we forget that it may have cocoa powder and it might be flat flavored with cacao, which is a reflux trigger that can loosen the lower esophageal sphincter. So you wanna be mindful of the flavor, avoiding mint, avoiding cacao, choosing a more vanilla flavor or something else. So now I'm going to share with you my top protein powders that I personally use and recommend and feel comfortable recommending to you. The first one I want to share with you is called Tum Love. Tum Love is a certified low FODMAP protein powder, which means it's been certified low FODMAP by Monash University. So it does not contain a high level of certain types of carbohydrates that could cause a lot of gas and bloating. Uh, it is a pea protein based protein powder. So it has pea protein, sprouted brown rice protein, coconut milk powder, a little bit of natural flavor, monk fruit, and sea salt. So this is a great option if you are plant-based and you're looking for a protein powder that you can add to your smoothies. I make a lot of my protein baked goods with this, like my protein pumpkin muffins. Those are on the Flora app, or I also do protein bites with this. This is a great one. You can add this into your oatmeal, Note, if you add this into your oatmeal, pea protein really absorbs water. So you're going to need to add a lot more liquid to get that same consistency that you had in your oatmeal before. So this is a great choice if you're looking for a plant-based protein that's not going to cause digestive issues. If you're struggling with reflux, you want to go for the vanilla flavor. The second protein I want to share with you is called Better Blends. This is an awesome protein that was created by registered dietitians. And I love this one because it has a little bit of added fiber in it. So unlike Tum Love, it has seven grams of fiber, which for different people, you may be wanting fiber, you may be wanting to avoid fiber. So if you're avoiding fiber, then Tum Love is a, is a better choice for you. If you want to add fiber to your diet to help support bowel regularity, prevent constipation, this is a really great way to do it. So seven grams per scoop, and it gives you 20 grams of protein per scoop. Tum Love also gives you 20 grams of protein. The pr ingredients in this one are hydrolyzed bovine collagen, oat protein, tapioca fiber, fiber, potato fiber, MCT oil, beta-glucan, which is a prebiotic that helps nourish your gut microbiome and uplift healthy bacteria, a little bit of sea salt, pure vanilla, natural flavor, stevia for sweetener. So this is great. This one I really love the flavor of, and I personally love this for smoothies. This is great for smoothies, oatmeal, or even adding into baked goods. The third protein I want to let you know about is called Drink Wholesome. Drink Wholesome is a wonderful protein powder because the ingredients are super, super simple. And it contains only gut nourishing ingredients like almond, pure vanilla bean, coconut, and it's sweetened with monk fruit, or you can get it unsweetened as well. They also have a variety of flavors that are totally just pure protein. So just pure egg white protein if you don't want any flavor or any sweeteners. So it makes it really accessible to people with allergies. It's a great one if you're really looking for a single nutrient protein powder. And this one is great in smoothies, or you can blend it up with a banana and some ice. I do recommend blending it because it blends better in a blender because of how natural it is. But it's a really excellent protein source. And this is actually the one that I love adding to yogurt bowls. And this is the one that in those two scenarios I was adding to my yogurt bowl to give me some more nutrition in the morning. I have discount codes to all of these protein powders down below in the description. So be sure to check those out. And this video was born out of requests from you guys. So thank you for requesting this video in the comment section of my other videos. And let me know in the description what kind of video you wanna see next. If you want a protein bar review, best, best protein bars if you have digestive issues or any sort of food product, let me know in the description. And if you are 
struggling to understand what to eat with reflux, you want to learn more about how and what to eat to prevent reflux, be sure to check out my reflux friendly grocery haul. You don't want to miss this video. All of my freebies and other socials for daily reflux tips are linked below and be sure to subscribe here for more daily reflux and gut health content. See you in the next video.